Hello everybody and welcome back to another Ruby reading. Oh, uh, this time it is chapter 37, the tournament. And um, I don't have anything much to say. So I guess we can just jump right into it. I don't act like I skipped the chapter because thir number 36 is an apology about there not being chapters. 37. Don't worry if I. Oh my god, I script one again. But yeah. So, let's get started. Chapter 37, the tournament. Word spread, word spread around quickly at the hospital about her second place win at the amateur front team. The reporter had apparently been working for a large media network and had been delighted to find more news about the miracle movies that had been at the site of the terrorist attack. Oddly enough, people started walk talking to her more now, noticing her as a person and not just an object of interest. Although they were careful not to intrude on her personal space, at least co co-workers were a lot more friendly was in beginning to overlook her honest nature. Lise had a smile whenever someone joked with her, saying things like, Whoa, don't punch me, in the middle of an argument, and instantly diffusing the tension. Whenever her sensitive ears picked up snippets of conversation, hearing her fellow nurses saying things such as, I totally let her kick my ass, she blushed and walked away. Embarrassed, yet also a little pleased on the inside that people finally seemed to be accepting her. Lise continued training her or but things had started to slow down. A few days of training only resulted in minuscule improvements. Keeping her garden and bloom was easy enough, but she still grew tired after healing a few major injuries and needing to rest for a while before her recovery. She agonized about this for a few days, wondering if this was the end of her fighting career, wondering if this was the extent of her abilities. After wallowing in self-pity for a few days, she tried something different. This time, instead of trying to train the plant, drain the plant, wondering if she could recover or if she flipped the process around. The plant withered a tiny little bit, but at least it just felt enough more tired, having spent more energy trying to harm the plant than she would have spent trying to heal. Voice noticed her depression and talked to her about it. At least spilling out her fear that this was her limit and that she'd never be as strong as Ruby or Weiss. You're already plenty strong, Weiss said, stroking her hair and trying to comfort her. Don't lie to me, Lise cried, her voice a little muffled as she buried her head in che Weiss's chest. I was there and I was there when I saw the four of you fight Ruby. I saw you set up that gigantic barrier that Ruby couldn't even break through. Oh, hold on. And Ruby was able to take, to take down all those androids, but you three still defeated her. Not everything is about Aura, voice sued. And Ruby had a scythe gun. Well, you're just fighting by hand. Your glyphs are made with ore, and you told me Yang could create fire and bleak leaves behind mirages. Elise said grumpily, sitting back and whimpering off her tears. And I've seen you more move before. You're faster than me too. You've only been in training for a few months, Wes. Caution. Don't expect too much out of yourself. You've been training since childhood, and I've been putting through so many. I've been put through so many tests. She trailed off abs to minded the rubbing her scar. Oh my god, extra read. Lee sighed, leaning into Wes. You're right, she admitted. I'm being too ignorant. Agnorant. I can expect to catch up to you in such a short amount of time. I'm being insensitive by not respecting your past. Sorry. You have nothing to be sorry for, I said. I understand your frustration and think your instant healing is a huge advantage in fights, and you're improving by leaps and bounds in hand to hand combat. If you master these those techniques, it won't matter how much ore they have if you can help maneuver them and take them down. At least I'm feeling a little better. I still think you're downplaying the usefulness of ore. 
But I guess I can concentrate on my physical strength and speed instead. So Elise continued her physical training with Aaron, alternating between strength training and keeping and getting fighting experience by sparring with the other people in the gym. She even managed to push Aaron far enough that he was forced to bring out his aura. A front orange or a burnt orange glare surrounding him as he fended off her attacks. In a huge burst of speed, he swept her legs out from under her and pinned her to the ground. Ha! Got you. Elise crowded. Crowed triumphantly as Aaron rolled off of her. What are you talking about? Aaron said indigently, brushing himself off his grin. I made you use your aura. Aaron laughed. I guess you did, he admitted. Progress is at standing, Elise. At this rate, I think you'll surprise me soon enough. She just shook her head, knowing on the inside that her progress would be much slower than, than now that her aura had stopped increasing. The months passed, the pref 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 professional tournament soon came up. Elise was feeling excited, hoping to meet OP again and possibly have a rematch. The tournament was taking place in the upper class district. A large amount of paid spectators coming to the next event. This time they took an airship airship back. Oh, fuck. Oh. The distance making travel by train impractical. It was Elise's first time being on an airship and she started she stared wide eyed that whole time. The gigantic vehicle with its spacious interior and large windows astounding her. Even Weiss was affected by her enthusiasm. Even though she had taken countless airships, airship and hover jet rides as part of her duties of being Schnee Dust, Schnee, Schnee Dust Company Air. The venue was huge, swarming with watchers and contestants. Luckily, Aaron had the foresight to to book a hotel room immediately after Elise had been entered into this tournament. The rest of the available rooms in all the hotels near the venue have been quickly filled up afterwards. The setup of the arena was similar to the previous tournament Elise had gone to, but on a much larger scale. Cages made out of distinctive steel sleeves mesh were scattered through a pavilion, cages nearly twice as large as the previous ones. Elise had bought in. Each cage was on a raised platform, overhead lights shining down on them to illuminate the fighters in, if needed. The pavilion contained cafes, each serving the breakfast, lunch, and dinner, with both set up for booths set up for advertising companies or other activities. Overall, it seemed more like a giant festival than just a fighting tour. The tournament was a four-day event with over a hundred participants for each weight division. A collection of skilled fighters gathered from various areas in Vail were, in Vail were to compete and Elise felt excited just to include just to be included in that number. They had arrived a day earlier than the event to give themselves a chance to get used to the outdoor conditions. Elise saw a lot of potential contestants also walking around the city. Aaron pointing out a few notable ones there. Oh my god. Oh. oh boy. The city seemed to have also been caught up in the event. Banners advertising the tournament hung up everywhere and the city filled with tourists. And the three went back to a hotel room a bit earlier to get some rest before the next day. The hotel, room, the hotel room was huge, nearly the size of an apartment, with a majestic poster bed and large bathroom that had a phenomenal marble bathtub. East and Wise had some fun in it, relieving a bit of stress before the big event. After that, at least spent a little while talking with Elise Weiss about her future, learning if she would continue fighting or eventually become a doctor. Weiss fell asleep before Elise did with Elise staying up a little while longer to nervously search up her opponents on her tablet. She spent some time checking out her matchup for the next day before forcing herself to put down the tablet and close her eyes. The next morning, she woke up completely awake. 
Her nerves tingling as she sat upright, her mind racing as she realized that the tournament was today. She sat in bed for a while before Aaron knocked on the, their door, telling them to wake up. Shaking with Weiss awake, she made sure her pajamas were covering her before going to the door and opening it. Aaron held out a pair of shorts and a tank top for her. What is this? Elise asked, taking the clothing from his hand and examining it. These clothes finally arrived, Aaron said. I was afraid we wouldn't get to your house on time, so I had them rerouted and sent here. Remember when I told you I'd take care of those sponsor offers? These are the regulation clothes for the tournament, and they also display the logos of the companies that are sponsoring you. Sponsoring, Elise said. Since when? You didn't think I'd pay for the first class airship ride in a five star hotel room out of my own pocket, did you? Aaron responded, chuckling. I rarely make ends meet, meet as is. Some of the money we get from our sponsors goes to paying for our equipment. Some of it is, some of it is invested. Of course, I'm saving up a bit for the school I plan on opening up. You can ask for your share at any time. It's in a, it's in a separate account. That's actually pretty cool, he said. I, eyeing the black clothing that was. Emblazone. Emblazone. The colorful brand names. Aaron looked relieved. Glad to, glad to have made the right decision. And another thing, he added. Change change into your clothing right now. Then put on a jacket and some track pants. The locker room. Well, excuse me. The locker room will probably be crowded considering the number of contestants. So you can change now to avoid the hassle. At least not even began to close the door when she realized that Aaron was wearing. Wait, do your shorts also have sponsors on them? Of course, Aaron said. I'm also going to participate in this tournament. It's a great opportunity to demonstrate my ability and perhaps even win something. Please stay. You didn't tell me. Aaron looks cheapish. I guess it slipped my mind, he said, and I thought it was pretty obvious. This is the biggest tournament of the year, so I definitely wasn't going to miss it. Well, I hope I don't go against you, he said, feeling even more nervous now. I'm two weight divisions higher than you, so no, you won't. Will my opponents be as good as you? Uh, probably not, Aaron said truthfully. I think you'll get pretty far. You should change now, and then we'll eat some breakfast before we go. Shut the door and Elise began changing. Weiss, yawning and treacherous. Well, I could do the yawning right now. Oh my god. Why? It's stupid. Hey, look, Weiss at least said, pointing at the new apparel shoes. Sponsors! Weiss looked impressed. Some of those were pretty big companies, Weiss said, getting up and closely looking at over each logo. Weiss' fate got a little closer to chest, so at least arced her back a little more, raising an eyebrow. You like what you see? At least the is shook her head over her front body. Weiss realized what position she was in and blushed, quickly standing up. Come on, she said, cheeks pink. No more messing around. Let's get changed and eat some food so we're not we're not late to your way in. Aaron told Weiss over breakfast that he was also participating she took it in a stride, finding it quite logical. Five-star hotels, food was delicious. At least, at least able to order a custom-made omelet that the chef prepared on the spot. This is probably not the right time to ask, but isn't it a bit weird that you're eating animal eggs? Weiss wondered. At least go ahead shaking your head. In terms of physiology, fondness of basically humans with a few added benefits and some of other animal traits. She said, pointing to her ears and on its horns. Besides, eggs are rich in nutrition and, and an easy source of food, so plenty of animals eat the eggs of other animals. They finished breakfast quickly and walked to the tournament grounds, which were quite close to the hotel. Aaron and Elise immediately set off the changing room and the way in areas. Weiss decided to walk around a bit and look at the booths before the night started. Elise still easily passed the way in, despite having a gained a few pounds of muscle, and then the two were decided 
directed to a rating. Aaron was called out twice first. The police only had one match from the bed. Oh my god. Why? I'm gonna buy from the amateur tournament. At least only had one match for the day, having gotten a buy from the amateur tournament, so she sat in the waiting room. Oh wow. Watching matches on the video screen as she waited for her turn. Just as Elise saw the results of Aaron's fight on the screen, seeing that he had won the match, a judge came in and called her name. You're up, he said, handing her a pair of padded. Ah, found it. Lisa, uh, you're up, he said, handing her a pair of pad fingerless gloves. Elise slipped them on and followed him out of the room. The crowd parted for the official and snapped photos of her as she walked her cage, stretching a bit, loosening up her tense muscles. The large open still sit cage rose up in front of her. The silvery mesh wall is nearly twice as tall as her. The panel of three judges sat outside of the cage in their own roped off sections. Their tell make a final decision in deciding the match. Her opponent was already inside of waiting. He was in Oxfox. Only an inch or so tall. Then her bulky muscular look at so he had just barely slept under the weight of it. At least got into a position opposite to him. The referee stepped forward and brought his hand signaling the Fight. The gants served each other, looking for an openings. At least threw out a few fast jabs and leg strikes, testing the Octonus' defense. But he just grunted and kept his guard up, watching her. With a bellow, he began to charge, but at least I had already predicted that he had dropped the blow, flying her aura and tackling his legs. His aura clashed with hers as she flipped him over and threw him to the ground, rotating and landing on top of his leg. The ox panicked as she began bending his leg back, kicking out with his other leg, trying to push himself up. Elise held on, ignoring the frantic kicks to her head, but the ox suddenly shouted and lifted his leg straight up. Also lifting Elise into the air and swung his leg around, smashing her against the cage. The force being slammed against the tough still seek made her loosen her grip. The oxen then stomping her against the ground and quickly backing away. Elise got to her feet and shook her head, a little dazed. The ox took advantage of her disorientation and took the offensive this time. Dashing forward and swinging at her, each punch was strong but a little slow, so at least dodged a few fists before grabbing hold of one and twisting it to the side, then pushing it back against the ox and bending his wrist joint to the limit. The ox grunted and backed off, trying to loosen her hold, but at least followed him, eventually backing him up against the cage, pressing her, pressing her, pressing even harder, forcing him to his knees. At least was a little afraid that she might have to completely snap his wrist before he gave up, but the oxen yielded before she had to do anything drastic, tapping the mat as Elise forced him down to the ground, his waist bending further than it should have. Referee rushed in and Elise, Elise immediately let go, wondering if the ox was okay. He held his arm face pinched, face pinched in pain, Elise felt bad, wondering if the injury was severe. The ox was walking out of the ring when Elise ran up to him. Wait, she said. The ox turned around, a questioning expression on his face. Can I heal you? Elise asked, motioning with her arms. A spark of recognition took hold in his eyes, and he nodded, holding out his wrist. Gently wrapping her fingers around his injury, she shifted his fraction, fracture back into place and knitted the bones back together, also steaming a bit of an, stemming a bit of internal pain. Thanks, the sick roughly smiling at her. Good match. Elise nodded and shook his head. Hand green. Walked out of the ring separately, at least he heading towards Weiss, who was standing in the crowd and smiling at her. Oh, 
Professionalism. A girl suddenly ran in front of Elise, holding a small tablet up and taking a selfie with Elise in the background. Giving her a shy wave, she disappeared back to the throng, leaving Elise a little bewildered. You see that? Elise asked twice, taking her jacket and track pants from her wife's from her wife's <laughs> from wife's arms and slipping them on. Yeah, you're definitely getting popular, wife said, grinning. What do you think Aaron is? We can go check the standings, the standings, at least said, beginning to walk towards one of the large electric, electronic signs. After waiting a bit for Aaron's name to pop it, to pop, to pop in, they saw that he had just won his second match, winning by a knockout. They headed toward the gate where he had just had his match, meeting him halfway there. Aaron looked at Fetch, smiling, showing no visible signs of injury. Easy match, at least said. He shrugged. The other guy was slower than me, so I just closed the distance and knocked him silly. You really just say knocked him silly? At least he. I think you're just faster than everyone else, so I said there. Alright, let me skip that. Uh, I think you're just faster than everyone else, so I said there. All this fighting has made me hungry, Aaron declared, ignoring them. Let's go get some lunch, and then we can spend the afternoon watching the rest of the matches. They walked to the cages of the pavilion, buying some sandwiches and fried potatoes, and sat, sat down at a bench to eat lunch. Afterwards, they spectated the other rounds. At least noting how the heavier divisions fought. With each weight increases increase between the classes, the fighters got larger, their muscles and oars seeming stronger and more solid than the lighter divisions. That's just an illusion, said, shaking his head at the least had pointed them out. If you haven't realized already, the weight divisions are meaningless. Why it's not? Aura is a real determined determinant. Tournament here, isn't it? Yep. I was say, considering the amount of strength and speed or enhanced fighters have, the extra bit of weight or power doesn't really matter in the overall scheme of things. Then why are we fighting at lower weighted divisions, always ask? Two reasons. One is because this is our natural weight, and it won't be good to strive or gorge ourselves to higher or lower weight divisions. Two is because a lot of the spectators, including audience, audience, these fighters are being broadcast to a normal people. Those who can wield aura on a significant level are relatively rare. So the audience needs a bit of norm normality so they can relate to the fighters and actually have interest in our fighting. Thus, the weight division distracts the audience from the fact that our auras are what gives us our strength. Elise and Weiss stared, surprised at the length and depth of the explanation that Anna just gave. Wow, he said. That sounds awful. Shut off. It's not a good system, Aaron agreed. But the company that runs this tournament needs to earn money to recoup their loss from creating the venue and also to pay out the prizes. In addition, this gives you and me an opportunity to advertise our sponsors to a large amount of people and earn a bit of our own money. So is there any way, is there any way fighters can compete without weighing divisions? Let's, let's ask. Of course there are. Well, those matches are usually much less popular and less advertising. It's delusioning, disillusioning for the audience to see a skinny little girl throw around a full grown man. Please look down on herself. Hmm. Time, times are changing, I said, nodding. The growing popularity of huntresses and hunters are enlightening more and more the population about to exist about the existence and use of aura. That that's why you'll see people like Ophia got a huge fan base where people will idolize her based upon her looks combined with her seemingly 
cost of strength. You're very talkative today, Wise no Noted, looking at Aaron in a new light. I think I like this intellectual side of you. Aaron smiled, his sheets tinting in pleasure. I need to know these things because I'm going to be creating my own fighting school, remember? Now that you've mentioned it, how's Ophia doing? At least on Earth. I haven't watched any of her matches today. The lighter weight divisions have their fights in the morning. <laughs> the fights in the morning, Aaron said, so you wouldn't have to wouldn't have had the chance to speak to her. However, I did see that she won her match today. I'm sure we'll bump into her if we keep walking around. Unfortunately, they didn't meet Orphea, but they did match or watch a few of my matches for a while before heading back into town for a meal and a rest. They each had matches tomorrow morning, so Aaron wanted them to make sure they accept well and were refreshed before fighting. The three headed back to the hotel rooms after dinner, and Aaron wished them a good night before going to his old room. It was night time, and Elise and Weiss were snuggling in bed. This for you. Weiss was just about to doze off when Elise spoke up with Weiss. Hmm? She mumbled sleepy. I think I need a weapon. Let's see. No, really, Weiss. Weapons make you so much stronger. Bro, bro, a weapon or something. Voice muttered half a seat. He stopped for a moment. But wood rots and it really it isn't as hard as metal. Power it with your arm. Voice is on his side. Snuggling deeper. Then it'll just break when I don't put an ore into it. I don't know. Voice mumbled. Find something that fits who you are. Voice nodded. I'm at least nodded, contemplating her words. Sorry for bothering you, she said really the truth we went to Okay, I said. Possibly false. At least I listened to us peacefully breathing. Once her hand to hand combat skills stopped improving quickly, she had to find something else, something that would continue to allow her to grow stronger. Oh, that's the chapter. That's chapter 37, in the tournament. And we get to read the tournament. Another one! We're going to read another tournament. And then I think, I think after the tournament we're done with Elise's and Weiss's side story. And we can get back to fucking Ruby in the village. Um, yes, fucking Ruby in the village. Wonderful. Just to make sure you don't get ripped apart. <laughs> so yeah guys, that is chapter 37. No, fuck it. I'm going to read the author's note. No, yay, a chapter. Sorry for my weekend absence, college absence, and college visit. This chapter set up a bit more of my world, so if you have any questions, just ask over in PMs or in reviews. Apologize if one more fight scene slash plot progression. Th these are getting longer than expected. Apparently, my terrible, I'm terrible at planning, so the Elise interlude will still apparently take a lot longer. Oh. Even though I think it's just the tournament and then the decision. I think it's just these two. I'm pretty sure it's the tournament. Part two is over. Like the whole side plot is done. But yeah, guys, that is it. Um, if you wonder what music I used, or what music I used for the background music, I use the ambient music from a game called. Dawn of War is from, or like the full name is Warhammer 40,000, Dawn of War. It's a really old PC game and one of my uh, favorites. And I use that as my ambient music, uh, except this one right here where it's my intro. I feel it is really cool when after the five second intro is over, I play this one and it continues the song. But I also have to put it in the same playlist so you hear reruns of it. But either way, guys. Um, it's what my thoughts on this chapter. It was alright. Um, I don't mind rereading it, and it was, again, alright. I didn't feel any feels, and it's just this kind of meh. Um, I do like, however, I do like when Vonis mentioned their abilities. 
and describe other fonts. Just because fonts in this world are seen as a bad thing and they are discriminated against, against when there is real no reason to make. It's more or less like, why not? That's what I do. But, um, that's kind of what I liked about the chapter. Um, Elise is just getting stronger. Weiss is more or less becoming like a token lolly. I've been trying to read her character as is in the movie first, you know, uptight, bitchy, you know, whatever. But, in this fan fiction, I think they gave her the role or the writer kind of changed her character to like, I don't know, like not as stuck up, I guess. And I mean, nobody likes stuck up people, but eh, eh, it's whatever. Anyways, guys, I keep saying, anyway, guys, this is the end of the episode. Um, if you enjoyed, like, and or like if you enjoyed, comment what you thought, the chapter, and the reading, and da ba da ba da, and subscribe for more content every day around 4 o'clock. I'm going to try and make 4 o'clock every day, but that might change because I'm actually going to be getting a job on Wednesday, so that schedule, the well, time schedule of me uploading will probably change to either earlier uploads or later when I'm out of work. If I actually get the So anyway guys, take care of the crazy world we live in. Peace.